Hello, and welcome to today's webcast brought to you by Laser Focus World and Endeavor Business Media. Today's event, State of the Art in Femtosecond Fiber Lasers, will be presented by Yaroslav Sperling, Business Development femtosecond, uh, for Femtosecond Fiber Lasers at Menlo Systems, Anand Bano, International Sales for Femtosecond Fiber Lasers at Menlo, and Christian Mauser, Product Manager for Femtosecond Fiber Lasers, also at Menlo. And the, we will start after I'm done with an introduction by Patricia Krop, also of Menlo. My name is John Wallace, and I will be your moderator today. This presentation is both live and interactive, so you can ask questions at any time via the Ask a Question box in the presentation window. We will answer as many of these questions as we are able during the Q&A portion at the end of this presentation. If you have any technical difficulties during the webinar, such as audio not working or anything else like that, just type your issue into the uh, same Ask a Question box, and a member of our team will assist you. For your convenience, this presentation will be available on demand within 24 hours of this live event today. A reminder email message will be sent to all registrants with a link to the archive. It will also be accessible from the Laser Focus World website. Also, we have some uh, resource items available for you to download, uh, white papers and other resources. These can be downloaded using the event resources tab just under the ask a question box. Now it gives me great pleasure to start off this presentation with Patricia Crocs intro. Hello and welcome to Menlo Systems webinar on femtosecond fiber lasers. This is the first out of two parts in a mini series. Let me briefly introduce our company. Menlo Systems is the pioneer of the optical frequency comp technology. Co-founder Professor Ted Hench received the Nobel Prize for this invention in 2005. Our company originates as a spin-off from the Max Planck Institute for Quantum Optics. We now look back at more than 20 years of successful photonics business and count over 150 employees worldwide. Our headquarters are located near Munich in southern Germany, with subsidiaries in China, Japan and the US. We serve customers around the globe with applications in science and industry. The optical frequency comb has been our first product. However, we have continuously expanded our product portfolio in order to best serve our customers. Our further product lines are ultra-stable lasers, terahertz time domain solutions, femtosecond fiber lasers and space combs. And our most recent development is a complete laser system for quantum applications. Today's webinar will focus on the advantages of our femtosecond laser technology. Our presenters are Dr. Jaroslav Sperling in business development for femtosecond fiber lasers, Dr. Andon Bano in international sales, and Dr. Christian Mauser, who is product manager of our femtosecond lasers. After the webinar presentation, we invite you to take part in our live Q&A session. We now switch to our studio in Munich. Enjoy the webinar. So thanks for the introduction and welcome everyone. For a very basic start, let's have a look at the three things that we are trying to bring together today. So basically we talk about lasers, so sources of stimulated emission that consist of a gain medium in an optical resonator uh, and that are pumped by some external source. Uh, we talk about fiber lasers, so the gain medium will be in a flexible waveguide. And we talk about femtosecond fiber lasers, so fiber lasers that emit a train of ultra-short pulses with pulse durations measured in femtoseconds. Uh, probably most of you will have heard uh, kind of these comparisons. As for me, I find it fascinating every time uh, when remembering the 10 femtoseconds compared to a minute, as a minute does to the age of the universe. Um, so we have defined the topic of today. Why is it uh, interesting to bring these three things together? Well, because simply speaking, uh, having things in a fiber make your life easy. 
Let's have a quick look into the biography of fiber lasers. Actually, their, their career path is not unsimilar to other photonic technologies that only came up in the last two decades or so. So the field of fiber lasers was born in, uh, in 1961, so soon after the invention of uh, the laser itself. Uh, however, the field was a kind of a sleeping beauty uh, for 20 years or so, when it was outshined by exciting developments uh, in things like laser crystals or dye lasers. Uh, happily, the Sleeping Beauty was kissed awake uh, in the early 80s or so, uh, essentially by the progress made in diode uh, technology and fiber technology. So in summary, and um, I'm citing from an excellent textbook on this topic, um, the success in fiber lasers is a joint success in the field of solid state lasers and fiber technology as fiber lasers adopted solutions from uh, both of these areas. By coincidence, in the, in the January issue of Laser Focus World, you can find the statistics that nicely illustrates uh, the history. So what is shown here is the number of US patents filed for different laser technologies in each decade. So when you look at, the, at fiber, you can see that fiber lasers have been slow to come, but nowadays uh, account for almost 50% uh, of all patents filed. So Menlo System has its share here, and in fact, uh, the presentation of today is centered around one of our patents, uh, which we call our figure nine technology. So before looking closer at figure nine, uh, let me briefly review some basic principles of femtosecond fiber laser technology as of today. Okay, so to start with gain media, we look at rare earth ions. Uh, these are effectively three level systems uh, by the nature of the electronic level scheme. Um, the wavelength coverage in terms of emission wavelength uh, is actually rather sparse uh, with a few main wavelengths uh, in the near infrared. The most heavily used dopants um, are erbium um, around 1550 nanometers and the terbium um, around um, 1050 nanometers. Um, both erbium and terbium have several pump bands. Um, nowadays, the pump bands can be um, reliably covered by uh, high power pump diodes. So the gain medium um, with a dopant will be the core of a single mold fiber. Uh, preferentially a polarization maintaining single mold fiber. Uh, the pump light uh, can be either launched into the core as well, uh, or in the case of um, so-called double clad fibers, it will be launched into the inner cladding uh, surrounding the core. But no matter what is the gain medium or what is the type of pumping, uh, we will have a laser beam propagating in the core of a single mold fiber, so a core with a relatively small diameter and a certain refractive index. And this has two main implications for the design of femtosecond fiber lasers. So first we have uh, chromatic dispersion. So simply speaking, different wavelengths uh, will travel different, at different speeds. Uh, femtosecond pulses contain a lot of different wavelengths. So chromatic dispersion tends, uh, will tend to stretch the pulses in time, leading to so-called chirped pulses. Uh, in case of normal dispersion, longer wavelengths will travel faster than shorter wavelengths. Uh, the opposite case, so if shorter wavelengths travel faster than longer wavelengths, uh, this will be the region of anomalous dispersion. Chromatic dispersion is a linear effect, so it does not depend on intensity. Um, for femtosecond fiber lasers, one also needs to deal with effects that do depend on intensity, so-called nonlinear effects. And uh, this is due, essentially, this is due to long interaction lengths, uh, high pulse peak intensities, and small core diameters. The most prominent effect uh, here is the so-called uh, nonlinear K effect, which translates into an intensity-dependent refractive index. Uh, without going into details, but one should briefly mention that fiber laser design uh, crucially depends on the dispersion region. So for erbium, uh, usually the fiber material has anomalous dispersion, so short wavelengths uh, will travel faster. Uh, this might be a, a kind of a lucky situation since nonlinear effects uh, will work in the opposite direction. Uh, so simply speaking, one might, be, one might be able to balance or counteract these two effects so that the pulse will travel through the medium without changing its shape. Uh, and this is referred to, um, to soliton pulse formation. In turn, at the terbium wavelength, uh, we look at the normal dispersion region. So there is no option to find such a balance. So by the nature, uh, the generated pulses um, tend to be strongly chirped. And um, again, without going into details, uh, but there is a variety of approaches 
how to manage this and how to obtain short pulses at the end uh, in this situation. And finally, let's have a short look on the typical building blocks of ultra-fast fiber laser systems, which are related to power scaling and um, frequency conversion. So first, in case uh, higher pulse energies are needed, one will typically employ a so-called master oscillator power amplifier concept. Uh, this is for several reasons. Uh, first, simply speaking, um, a low power seed laser is easier to control. Um, along similar lines, uh, amplifiers are typically operated in single pass configuration. Uh, so this means that the, the, that the amplifier has to stand only um, a power that is comparable to the output power. And this is unlike uh, to a laser resonator where the intracavity powers are usually much higher than the output powers. Also, amplifiers offer flexibility. Um, one can combine them into, into amplifier chains. As we have seen, the wavelength coverage of rare earth ions themselves is rather sparse. So to extend the wavelength coverage, there are several options um, available. A quite common technique is uh, frequency doubling or second harmonic generation. Another variant is to mix the original wavelength uh, with its frequency shifted counterpart for so-called different, different frequency mixing. Last not least, uh, in case a really broad spectral coverage is required, uh, one can resort to so-called supercontinuum generation. So this was a short overview on basic design principles. Um, I should emphasize though that uh, no matter which gain medium is employed or which building blocks, uh, the performance of an ultra-fast fiber laser system will be determined by the first link of the chain. Uh, so now let's turn to what is at the heart of femtosecond fiber lasers and this is uh, the oscillator and its mode locking scheme. So to show you an intuitive picture of mode locking, we have adapted a short animation. So this is a cavity where multiple longitudinal modes satisfy the resonance condition and oscillate in the cavity independently. Uh, so if the relative phases of the modes are random, the output intensity will exhibit random fluctuations uh, as well. Now in mode locked operation, the phases of the longitudinal modes are locked and constructive interference occurs periodically. So this results in what we want in a train of intense pulses with a repetition rate corresponding to the cavity round trip time. So while there are several techniques to achieve mode locked operation, uh, what we would like to employ here is so-called passive mode locking. So in essence, a reliable self-organization of the cavity modes. A common way to achieve passive mode locking is to employ so-called saturable absorbers. So these are devices that exhibit intensity dependent transmission. So a saturable absorber will selectively absorb low intensity light while high intensities will kind of burn through if you wish. So for self-starting mode locked operation, one of the random bursts that we have seen previously uh, will be transmitted through the absorber and once being allowed to, tr to travel back and forth uh, will become amplified and shortened until steady state operation is reached. Now, uh, most commonly, or most common saturable absorbers are so-called intrinsic saturable absorbers, so devices where real physical absorption takes place due to, due to a certain electronic level structure. A quite common implementation are semiconductor saturable absorber mirrors, where absorbing and reflective layers are grown on the same substrate. Uh, as illustrated on the left, uh, such devices uh, will only re reflect at high intensities. So while it's fair to say that um, uh, intrinsic saturable absorbers are a matured technology, they come with a few drawbacks. Um, so first, they need to be specifically designed, for example, they need to be adapted to certain wavelengths. Uh, severe is that they exhibit high noise flaws when it comes to phase noise. So which is obviously detrimental to um, high precision application. And last not least, uh, they might uh, degrade over time. So this situation has driven our search for superior alternatives uh, to realize a reliable mode locking scheme. And we have found a solution. It is based on a so-called um, artificial saturable absorber. Let's have a look into that. Okay, so um, we start with a simple fiber splitter. So simply speaking, this is a device uh, with two fibers uh, on each end. And if there is incoming light on one end, it will be split it into two equal portions on the other two ends. Okay, so now let's connect the two output ports and create a so-called fiber loop. 
so now what happens with the two portions? Uh, well, they will propagate in opposite directions uh, and interfere again at the splitter. Um, so in the simplest case, this will result in the original pulse being reflected back to where it came from. So the fiber loop acts as a mirror. The reflectivity changes, however, if the two counter-propagating pulses, for some reason, uh, acquire a phase shift relative, relative to each other before interfering again. So in that case, a certain fraction of the original input pulse uh, might actually be transmitted into the second input port. Okay, so if the behavior can be made, uh, can now be made to depend uh, on the input pulse intensity, we would have something like an artificial saturable absorber. And indeed, this principle is uh, employed in a so-called figure of eight laser. It consists of two parts, a so-called nonlinear amplifying loop mirror, which is, the, which is the upper loop here, and the main resonator, which is the, the bottom loop. Uh, the upper part relies on an asymmetric arrangement of an amplifying doped fiber section and a long section of undoped fiber. So now let's consider what happens to the two counter-propagating pulses. Uh, so the pulse portion propagating clockwise will mostly see a long piece of undoped fiber being not amplified. The pulse portion propagating counterclockwise in turn will first be amplified and then propagate a long piece of fiber. Uh, so this portion will experience a much stronger intensity-dependent nonlinearity. So if the intensity of the original input pulse is high enough, also the phase shift between the two counter-propagating pulses uh, will be high enough. So that we, we will have um, transmission into the resonator. So in steady state, uh, the pulses will be circulating in the resonator uh, and the fraction uh, can be coupled out. So... Um, now, this might look like a perfect solution. However, there is a major drawback for practicable devices. Um, it turns out that the figure of eight scheme has difficulties in self-starting mode locking uh, when employing polarization maintaining pivots, which is what we want to do here. Uh, so it turns out the figure of eight concept uh, is not really suitable for practicable devices, uh, but we at Menlo Systems uh, could build up on it uh, and advance it to the next level. Okay, so what is this? Uh, you might think now, uh, okay, this was too much of animations and uh, this must be some piece he forgot to delete. But actually, no, I would like to draw your attention uh, to this tiny little thing which does a lot of magic. Uh, it's called a non-reciprocal phase shifter. So what is a non-reciprocal phase shifter? Well, in essence, uh, this is a tiny fiber coupled device uh, working with polarization maintaining fibers. And it allows to tweak the phase shift of counter-propagating pulses uh, exactly the way you need it. And this is a game changer. So first we can adjust the overall phase shift in such a way that uh, at steady state, the loop mirror will operate in reflection mode rather than transmission. Uh, this allows to straighten the resonator part into linear arm. And at the same time, we can optimize the design for low intensities. Uh, so to achieve um, easy self-starting of mode locked operation. And I should emphasize the flexibility here. Uh, of course, one can couple the output into an output fiber with an output coupler. Uh, or we can employ uh, a short free space section within the laser cavity. And this allows for a straightforward integration of intracavity actuators, um, as we do for repetition rate tuning, uh, synchronization, or CEP stabilization. So thanks to these features, figure nine mode locking technology is not only the backbone uh, of our femtosecond fiber laser portfolio, but in fact, uh, it's also the working horse, not for all, but uh, for most of our other products. So to close, let me wrap up our claims here. Um, we look at a technology that is incredibly robust. Uh, we look at a versatile technology that can be uh, adapted in a straightforward way uh, to stabilization and synchronization requirements. We look at exceptionally low noise performance, uh, outperforming intrinsic saturable absorbers. And last not least, we look at a very cost-effective design. So these are quite a few claims, uh, and I'm now handing over to Christian to put this to the test. Thank you, Jaroslav, for all the explanations. I will show you now a femtosecond laser based on the figure nine mode locking. Here in this laser module uh, that's erbium based, we integrate all the electronics and optics which are required. So in principle, you only need the power supply, which is here in a battery pack. 
the inside of such a module you can see here. You can nicely integrate with the fiber-based design all the optics and the electronics in a compact package. To demonstrate now the performance of such a femtosecond laser module, um, I have a power meter on this side and I will connect one of the seat ports of the laser module to this power meter and I have on another output the connection to an optical spectrum analyzer. On the back side of the module I have attached a shock sensor which is recording the shocks and g-forces in all directions. Now we will start the femtosecond laser just by switching on the power supply and the mode locking will start immediately. Now the mode lock is established and on the screen you can see the values of the shock sensor and the optical output power of the seat port. On the left side you can see uh, the spectrum of the optical output. I will start shaking now the laser module and during this shaking you can observe the optical output parameters. There is nearly no change in the optical output parameters like the, the optical output power or the optical spectrum. If you think of applications, for example in production halls or in harsh environment, such a robust operation is essential. We have tested our lasers and even frequency comps with shock forces up to 16G without any major changes in output parameters. Also, uh, a huge temperature changes in environment will enable with the figure 9 design a um, stable and reliable operation. You can see two graphs on this slide where we change the environment temperature by around 40 degrees Celsius. On the left side, temperature cycles from 10 to 50 degrees are shown together with the normalized output power. On the right, we show the performance of a frequency doubled erbium femtosecond laser. We tested also the mode locking behavior of the laser at 0 degree and 40 degrees Celsius to highlight the robust performance. A figure 9 based fiber oscillator can be realized for many different active materials and wavelengths. Here I would like to show three spectra of our femtosecond lasers at ytterbium, erbium and tulium wavelengths. The overall intracavity dispersion is close to zero and enables low noise and broadband emission. Therefore, short pulses around 100 femtosecond can be directly achieved out of the laser oscillator. Due to a special design of the figure 9 laser, we can reduce the cavity length and realize high repetition rates of up to 250 MHz in a fiber-based design. These high repetition rates are especially important for our frequency combs with high mode spacing. The mode lock design does not rely on lifetime limiting components or saturable absorber. You generate a single mode lock state with identical parameters in this design, which is also visible in the consistent and reliable performance even after 10,000 on-off cycles. Due to the fiber-based design, the beam quality is very high. The figure 9 lasers have also an excellent pulse-to-pulse -pulse stability and high pulse quality with nearly transform-limited pulses. Especially the low timing jitter is outstanding for this mode locking technology and is based on the fast response of the nonlinear amplified loop mirror in the figure 9 design, which is highlighted by the integrated timing jitter in the upper second range for higher frequencies. Also low relative intensity noise is guaranteed in this design. The figure 9 mode locking also enables very low carrier envelope phase noise, which is compared in this publication with other different mode locking techniques. In this graph, the carrier envelope beat nodes of different mode locking techniques 
are shown. Without going into detail, one of the results is that the fiber-based laser with figure 9 mode locking is quite comparable to the noise performance of a titanium fire laser and has a superior performance compared to nonlinear polarization rotation and CSAMs. The noise of mode locked lasers has a direct impact on many applications. It is especially true for optical frequency combs because the line width and the frequency stability of comp modes determine the resolution of frequency spectroscopy and the stability of optical atomic clocks. Due to the possibility to integrate different repetition rate actuators in the laser cavity, the laser repetition rate can be precisely locked and synchronized to other laser sources and references. To summarize, figure 9 mode locking offers robust and long-term stable operation with lowest phase noise and timing jitter. Beside our developed technology of our femtosecond lasers, we ensure the overall quality of our products with external checks and certifications of our company and of the products itself. Some of them are highlighted here, for example, the vibrational and shock tests and also electromagnetic compatibility. The fiber optics are spliced and the lasers are assembled in our headquarters in Germany, which is shown in this video. This enables full flexibility for customized solutions and highest quality. We carefully test all optical parameters and the overall performance to serve our customers with their applications in science, industry and even space. Andon will now highlight a few of these applications and the corresponding laser models with the laser designs. Thank you, Christian, for your great illustrations. And thank you, Yaro, for the first part of the presentation. Now I would want to start with the spectrum of our product portfolio by showing you this graph of the spectral coverage of our lasers. Firstly, I'm introducing you to our industrial platform portfolio, which, as Yaroslav mentioned before, the wavelengths are determined by the doping material which is used in the fibers. Uh, for Airbium, we have the 1560 nanometer and the 780 nanometer of, for its second harmonic, and for its Airbium, its fundamental one at 1040 and the second harmonic at 520. Together with the Ilmo 930, these five models complete our industrial platform, but in the same in the same wavelengths, I would want to introduce you to our scientific platform, which the wavelengths of which correspond exactly to the previous ones, again because of the doping materials. However, I would want to highlight here why there is this division. Probably it will be explained better and it will be understood better in the next couple of slides, but a main aspect is its versatility. Via the scientific platform, we can already generate super continuum outputs both in the visible and in the near infrared, as well as peak shifted solutions in, in the full spectrum that is shown here. Uh, apart from these two big categories, I would like and will take this moment to introduce you to our most recent release, to our latest release, which is the Ilmo Mid IR. Uh, a mid-IR femtosecond laser in the 3 to 5 micron spectrum, which provides output powers in the range of milliwatts. Please feel free to contact us and to ask us for more information about this uh, mid-IR laser, which is recently released, and we will be proud and, and glad to share this information with you. And now I will move to, uh, to throw some light in this division that I made before between industrial and scientific platform. And uh, starting with the industrial platform, I would say that the main characteristic of these lasers is the cost-performance ratio, which comes because of the components that are used, standard fiber-coupled components and telecondo-standardized pump diodes. The, the lasers come with an ultra-compact design and are ready for OEM integration and to be operated even in harsh environment and non-lab environments. Even though this, these models can be considered uh, compact, robust, and are in lean production at many systems, we are definitely ready to hear your thoughts and ready to customize in some aspects and with some uh, off-shelf options as well, such as dispersion precompensations, fast modulations, pulse peaking, etc. Instead, for the scientific platform, I would, I would spend some words here saying that these lasers are made great for lab environments where synchronization is really important. By synchronization, I mean both CEP 
cardiac envelope phase stabilization, but also repetition rate, repetition rate synchronization. And the lasers come with a range of from 50 to 250 megahertz. Their temperature stabilized oscillators, oscillators make them a great solution for, uh, let's say, being insensitive to, to external perturbation, make them great, great solutions for uh, complete synchronization solutions. And Melo Systems uh, provides also uh, the electronics part of this of this kind of setups, but also for uh, asynchronous optical sampling or multicolor outputs and seed ports for uh, amplifier seeding as well. Even though I tried to make this distinction between these two platforms, I would say that the, the core concept behind the designs of all the Melo system lasers is modularity. We try to keep the, the setups as modular as possible. The simplest laser can be just a figure nine uh, oscillator which can be used for, amp for amplifier seeding or maybe an oscillator and an amplifier like the Ilmo 4 watt that I'm showing here. However, uh, more other modules such as dispersion, precompensation or fast modulation could be added to this model as well, uh, which is in the category of our uh, industrial models, I would say. Whether on the other side, I'm showing a, a scientific model, which is rather more complicated and uh, it, it has the option of the locking electronics of the second harmonic at, uh, at 780, but as well as the option of generating supercontinuum output, uh, adding other amplifier to its seed ports, etc. So all this, all this, uh, and not only these ones are possible. And uh, but, however, many systems will think about this. We'll just have to hear from you, uh, your application and your and your technical specifications that you expect from the laser to be. To, to generate and def definitely will think about its internal configuration design, I would call. Uh, now I would move to the, to the application part. And here I've picked up only uh, a few of them, only a handful of them, starting maybe from uh, 3D laser lithography and micro-machining, uh, differently called 3D nanoprinting on, or two-photon polymerization. Mm. And for this, for this application, which is actually quite relevant and very important in the field of uh, photonic wire bonding, bioprinting, lab on chip devices, etc. And uh, on the right side of the slide, you can already see two examples, which are just illustrations that we have received from our uh, from our collaborators or our uh, happy from our happy scientists, which have uh, managed to to publish these results in in their remarkable publications. For this application. I would highlight our ELMO 780 uh, high power model, which is shown in a figure, but also I can show it right here with me. This is the main module, the 1560 generation of, the, of, the, of this laser, and this is the second harmonic module. On the, on the figure on the slide is shown uh, the higher power version of this laser, which is just double size of this one. And, uh, and as you can see, this can be attached and detached in the, main body, in the main body of the laser, in the main block of the laser, and can be freely placed far away from the rest of the optics and the electronics and very close to your microscope, to, your, to the position that you would wish to, to place this, this, very handful, this very handful part of the laser. And uh, I, why, why did I highlight this uh, second harmonic generation that is detachable? It's because for, for such application is very important to, to, save, to, to save space in, uh, and, and to get as closer as possible to the sample that is going to be under print. And in this case, the laser comes with as short pulses as up to 60, 70, 60 or 70 femtoseconds with a pulse energy of up to 1.7 nanojoules and corresponding peak power of 20, 26 kilowatts, around 20 to 30 kilowatts, let's say like this. I, I tried to spend some, some sentences with this one for the reason that uh, people working on this field know exactly that the high peak power uh, and short pulses in this application really help with the, with the, speed, with the speed of the writing process. Mm. If, if you go for this solution, what you will receive in your lab is just what I illustrated you in my hands and what is illustrated in the graph. All the electronics and the optics is included already in this box. And for this, uh, for this reason, the laser makes like really an unbeatable solution to, to such application. Another application where I would focus on and I would, uh, I would propose again our ELMO family laser. The application is terahertz time domain spectroscopy, a very relevant application uh, 
which is getting a lot of attention recently also in the industry field but not only in the biomedical and pharmaceutical fields as well. In industry I've already illustrated here uh, a real example where our laser and our let's say let's call it optics in general is, inter is integrated in a robotic arm and is used for uh, paint monitoring of a car, paint layers actually monitoring of a car and uh, uh, this image is a courtesy of Das Nano, the project called Inspector Collaboration between Das Nano, Melo Systems and uh, Fraunhofer Institute for Industrial Mathematics. The laser at 5060 comes with fiber coupled, uh, with fiber coupled delivery which can be up to 30 meters away from the laser body and this enables also this robotic, this robotic arm integration but any kind of distance measuring, let's say up to 30 meters away from, from the laser. Uh, Melo Systems offers also terahertz antennas, both receiving and, and uh, transmitting terahertz antennas, generation antennas, but as well as full setups, uh, terahertz time domains, spectrometers. And I have illustrated here just TerraSmart, one of the most compact terahertz time domain spectrometers in the market. Great performance in the, in the, terahertz, in the terahertz field. I would move now to another very fancy and intriguing application, at least for me. I, I, really, I really like this application. Uh, the multi-photon fluorescence imaging. Multi-photon fluorescence imaging is an application uh, which uh, a technique, I would say, an imaging technique which is based on the green fluorescent protein. A protein which uh, the, the discoverers of which got the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2008. And Melo Systems has decided to, to contribute to this field by introducing our 930 nanometer laser, which is a uh, uh, femtosecond fiber laser uh, uh, generating very short pulses uh, at uh, 930 nanometers, perfectly adaptable and integratable in any microscope, even the homemade ones. Uh, even though historically uh, people dealing with this field are used to use their titanium sapphire lasers, which actually are uh, much bigger. So ILMO 930 is only, I would say, approximately a tenth in, in, in size compared to a titanium sapphire laser. However, this, this tool is really great for this application uh, for, for another very important reason, which is uh, that in, this, in the head of this laser could be integrated a fast uh, amplitude modulation, very useful tool for such an application, and as well a pre-dispersion compensation unit, which is use, uh, very, useful for, uh, very useful for compensating for the rest of the optics, optical path that will be used in your microscope. And last but not least, I would want to spend some words in, uh, in another application, which is amplifier seeding. And Melo Systems here contributes by providing the seed laser for high power amplifiers, even up to terawatts level. The Melo's duty here and Melo's, uh, Melo's job, let's call, is to provide a perfect interface and very, let's say, top-notch seed lasers for these amplifiers, which can be synchronized, as I previously mentioned, and stabilized in repetition rate, but also in carrier envelope phase. And Melo offers also the full solution in terms of electronics as well for such cases. I would stop my presentation right here and uh, thank you very much for the attention that you have shown during this webinar. I hope it has been uh, informational for you, but as well a bit entertaining, I would say. Uh, I would invite you all now to a question and answer session. So please feel free to join us there. And another very kind reminder is about our next webinar, which is in the 24th of March. Uh, we will try to we will keep you updated and its content will be definitely tuned according to your feedback. So we would kindly we are kindly looking forward to hear your feedback as well on this webinar. Thank you very much once again. Okay, a big thank you to the speakers for this overview of femtosecond laser principles and technology advances, as well as applications. Just as an aside, I have to say that the shock test of the ELMO laser module was especially impressive to me. I've never seen a laser banged around quite like that. So, with successful operation. <laughs> so we're now in the Q&A portion of the webcast. Uh, Christian Mauser will be answering the questions. Once again, to ask a question, use the ask a question box in the presentation window. Uh, first question. Uh, let's see, just finding the question. What is the advantage of using polarization maintaining fibers? 
Thank you, John. So the, the main advantage of polarization maintaining fiber is, as the word says, that the polarization stays the same. So typically for fibers, um, stressing, so by bending or temperature changes, will rotate the polarization inside the fiber. And if you think of experiments and uh, applications where you want to have uh, a fixed polarization orientation, for example, if you are doing second harmonic generation or different frequency generation, um, there only one polarization axis is converting the light. Therefore, polarization maintaining fibers, they have stress elements inside. So they keep the polarization in the, in the slow and the fast axis, it's called. And then the polarization stays the same, even for strong bending and uh, huge temperature changes. So that's a, a great benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, next question, what is phase noise? Okay, the, the phase noise, um, I mean, to start with a, with a single frequency uh, laser, so you, that's typically one frequency, uh, one line. Typically, it's not monochromatically perfect. Um, therefore, um, it exhibits phase noise, for example, op optical um, or fluctuations in the optical phase. And uh, this broadens the line width of this, this laser. And leads to an uh, finite line width. And that's true also for mode lock lasers. There you have uh, a lot of uh, frequency components in needles. And if you then have a, a huge phase noise, the, the line width is, is broad. So what we want to do for the oscillators is that we reduce the phase noise as much as possible. So what's the origin of, a phase, of the phase noise? It's in principle. Quantum noise, um, for example, by spontaneous emission of the gain media, or you can also have some introduction by the, 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 the technical realization. So you have vibration um, influenced by the, the temperature changes. Also, um, intensity noise can couple into the phase noise by nonlinearities. And therefore, we take great care to um, optimize the, the oscillator performance for lowest phase noise. That's mm -hmm. especially important for our frequency combs, where um, small lines are directly related then to, to the resolution, for example, in, in mm -hmm. frequency spectroscopy for dual combs. Can you elaborate on the difference between standard oscillator design and oscillator design for frequency combs? So as Jaroslav mentioned, um, we have the in principle a fiber-based oscillator and that has a, a fixed length, fiber length. And if we want to, to change the repetition rate, um, we introduced uh, in the oscillator design intracavity actuators. Uh, for example, piezo stepper motors for, typically you have a, a slow actuator for a big tuning range and a fast actuator with a smaller tuning range that it can act faster. And um, the same applies for the, the carrier envelope fa uh, offset frequency. And therefore we precisely balance the, the influence of the different actuators um, and we also try to to reduce the, the yeah to, to reduce the um, the influence or the crosstalk between the actuators inside the, the laser oscillator. Therefore, the, the repetition rate actuators just act on the repetition rate, and the carrier envelope offset frequency actuators just act on the on on this parameter to avoid um, or to optimize the performance. And if you do this, and if you optimize also the, um, for example, the noise performance that you opt to operate the, the laser oscillator in a, in a certain range, then it's less sensitive for uh, intensity noise, for example, from the pump diodes. And that's the main difference between our standard oscillators and our frequency cones oscillators, because there we are introducing the actuators 
and we take care that all the noise sources are reduced for the highest performance. Have you integrated ELMO in a pump probe system with electronic time delay? Um, for the ELMO, I mean, we have this, as Andrew mentioned, we have two different platforms. That's our scientific platform and the industrial platform. And typically for the ELMO platform, um, the repetition rate is not stabilized. It's quite fixed, but it's not stabilized and we cannot at the moment uh, um, introduce their actuators. Therefore, we are using our scientific platform where you can optimize all the, um, the, the repetition rate and you stabilize it and you can synchronize it to, an, to a different laser. Um, for the ELMO in a pump probe setup, you can have synchronized outputs starting from the same oscillator, but with an electronic delay between for different oscillators, this we can cover with our scientific platform. What frequency range can the oscillator lock to? Can locking be done at 115 to 125 megahertz? The great benefit is that we offer the, the, the whole package is that we can really offer the a solution starting from 40, 50 megahertz up to 250 megahertz with our standard uh, lasers. And we can synchronize them to all repetition rates. So we introduce them. That's the, the, the tuning range depends a little bit on the repetition rate, um, typically from several hundreds of kilohertz up to megahertz tuning range for the repetition rate for, with our slow actuator. And um, exactly, so in principle, we offer the, the, the whole package and we take care that, uh, for example, 76 point, 0.53 megahertz can be locked to, an, to a reference um, to another laser. So that's a, a great benefit of the, the whole package. Okay, we have time for one more question, but I want to note to the audience that all your questions will be sent to the presenters who will answer them later um, via, via email, I'm sure. Um, so don't worry about that. Uh, so the last question, can you please go through the basics of, fig of the figure nine technology? I did not understand fully the basic idea behind it. So the, the basic idea of figure nine is that you have, an, um, first of all, all polarization maintaining fiber, and you're using an artificial saturable absorber which is typically far, much faster than real saturable absorber. And uh, this you can get by uh, this nonlinear amplified loop mirror. This is working if you then bias the, the, the phase shift, so that the, the pulse traveling uh, in this direction, in this direction, see a phase shift, and therefore you're bi biasing this nonlinear amplified loop mirror. And with this configuration, you can operate this oscillator, this laser cavity in a, in a reflection mode, and then you can easily introduce um, actuators in a small free space part, for example. And you can also realize really short cavity lengths to operate to, a, for example, a repetition rate to 250 megahertz. And um, we, I think we can provide a, a detailed, a, a paper in detailed, uh, description of the, the figure nine concept and the, the benefits of this figure nine um, later. Okay, that ends the Q&A session. I would like to note again, because a couple of people just, uh, just some new questions just appeared. I wanna note that even though we can't ask your questions on air or answer your questions on air, they will be going, all be going to the presenters who will answer them later. So Christian, uh, one final thing. Uh, do you have any closing remarks you'd like to make? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I have to thank all for their attention to listen to this webinar. And um, if you, we will answer all the questions. And of course, if you have 
additional questions or comments, then just contact us. Thank you. All right. So I would like to thank today's speakers, Anand Bono, Christian Mauser, and Yaroslav Sperling of Menlo Systems for today's presentation, State of the Art in Femtosecond Fiber Lasers. I'd also like to remind you that the webcast on-demand version will be available on the Laser Focus World website, and the link to the archived webcast will be sent to you via email within the next 24 hours. On behalf of Laser Focus World and Endeavor Business Media, we thank you for joining us today and look forward to serving you with future webcasts.